Hello everybody, welcome back to my Diamond G1000 series. This is episode 3 in the series, and uh, in this episode we are going to cover uh, how to load approach procedures and how to let the autopilot fly approach procedures. So as you can see here, we are currently paused in the sim. Um, at 6,000 feet, it's just above the cloud layer in uh, England. Um, looking at the flight plan here, you can see we'll be flying to EGGP, which is Liverpool airport on the ILS 09 um, so if you've loaded the flight plan with the EFB this will already be loaded in like this so ILS 9 via Wrexham um, Monty is the waypoint that we're currently at um, but I will show you that you sh can clear or remove this approach hit OK and start from scratch so as you can see I've cleared the kind of the approach from what was on there and I'll show you how to enter it manly, manually we would hit procedure select approach ILS 09 via Wrexham Barrow we set this to what it says on the approach chart so down here at the bottom of the approach chart 260 feet for a cap one um, I'm not going to go over kind of reading approach charts in this episode I may go over it in a future episode the important information is always at the bottom here and it's your minimum so that's 260 feet that's loaded in barrow 260 change this by scrolling these this knob go down and just kind of check on the map that it looks kind of what you'd expect the approach to look like which it does hit load and hit yes and at this point so this should already all be loaded in if you've loaded it through the efb i'm just going to clear on this to remove that waypoint and then scroll down to the Wrexham waypoint because as you can see we've passed Monty we are heading to Wrexham hit director scroll down to the bottom and hit enter so that that has now loaded it in so the next thing we want to check and obviously I'll do this while you're flying not while paused go to the first screen and basically you want to ensure that the autopilot is set to GPS with the nav button that it is armed and that you are set at the altitude that you are cruising at and it will have altitudes here so when we're flying it, i'll show you what will pop up and how to ensure that it's flying the vnav to automatically take you into the landing so we'll do that now we'll go back to the outside i'll hit p on the keyboard and that should unpause us as you can see the sim has now started reset the camera here and i will fast forward this now until we get to the next kind of step in the flying the approaches with the autopilot so i will see you at that point so you can see here we are just about to pop, cross over wrexham um, i've dropped our altitude a little bit to 4500 feet so we're right in the thick of the clouds so this is a good example of showing that you can use the autopilot and the ils and the rnav approaches to land at airports where you've got very low cloud cover basically your minimums are your minimum altitude that you be able to, you need to be able to see some sort of indication for the runway so like we discussed that's 260 feet for us i will drop this altitude so the blue number is around that so i will go 300 feet that's just like a further reminder um and then hopefully if all goes well this activate vnav profile will just tell us when the plane should automatically start dropping our altitude to follow the ils procedure so at WAL07, we need to be at 3,500 feet. The plane has calculated that for a three degrees glide slope down to that altitude from where we are now, the plane needs to descend in about 3.3 minutes 35. I'll just double check. So yeah, in three minutes 30 seconds, and it will go down at about 682 feet per minute. Um, when it starts calculating that, and you know it's kind of armed, a number will come up here in magenta with the altitude that it's aiming for um, usually you can hit vnav here and it arms the kind of vertical path but for some reason it's not doing that it's been a little bit buggy but we'll uh, we'll see what happens and if uh, it doesn't kind of do it we will automatically kind of do that by changing the blue altitude to what we're aiming for and then doing either a vertical speed or a flight level change mode um, probably vertical speed as soon as the plane is telling us exactly what vertical speed we should be aiming for so we can put that directly in with the vertical speed mod but we'll see what happens we'll see if uh, we'll see if it does it automatically or not 
So what are we at? Two minutes, 35 seconds until that happens. I'll just speed up the sim a little bit to get a little bit closer. So a minute. Slow it back down now. As you can see, it knows what altitude we're aiming for. Um, for some reason, it's not actually arming the vertical path mode. We might need to get a little bit closer to WAL here for that to happen. So for now, what we'll do is we'll set 3,500 feet in this. And in about 30 seconds, we will set the vertical speed mode to roughly 650 feet per minute to go down and that should get us to WAL 07 at 3,500 feet or um, in that designated time. So we will arm vertical speed mode now. Uh, there you go, it's actually armed it itself now so it's on V path so it was automatically dropping it so we didn't actually we had it set up just in case it didn't work, but it has automatically worked. So I'll drop this blue number back down to 500 now. And the plane should automatically nose down to get us to the designated altitude. So you can see it is dropping our altitude at 600 feet per minute down to 3,500 feet. Checking on here. And all we have to do is just maintain the throttle to ensure we don't overspeed. So we'll have a look at the chart again. On this section of the chart, zoom in with these buttons. You can see this P is showing where we should get our approach fix. So that is D7.5 ILVR. So on this, that is ILV is ILS for Liverpool, 9.6 nautical miles out. ILV 7.5 final approach fix. So at that point, we should have captured the glide slope. So we need to make sure that we arm the approach mode before we get to that point so I'll probably arm the approach mode as we start making this turn just to ensure the plane is completely set up for the approach and carry on dropping the speed at this point just basically now we're just setting up for a landing so we need to make sure that we're not over speeding we're around maybe 80 to 70 to 80 knots coming in on the straight and then drop it down so we're at about 75 knots 70 knots when we cross the run hold runway threshold and we will set the flaps out once we've made the turn see on the chart here shows the plane I'll just close that now so there you go next altitude is 2500 feet keep dropping the speed BOD means bottom of descent, so that is telling us when we'll reach this altitude. So in 33 seconds at the current speed and pitch, we'd reach 2,500 feet. There we go. So at this point now, I am going to... Looking down here and just ensure we need to be under 110 knots to drop the, drop the first level of flaps. Reset the view. Pull out the throttle. There we go, 110 knots, drop first level of flaps. As we are making this turn, press the approach button. See here, the localizer is armed and the glide slope is armed. There you go, so it's captured the localizer, so it's captured the uh, left to right navigation for the runway. And you can see the glide slope diamond here on the left of the altitude it is coming down. So when that gets close and it captures it, GS will arm in green and that will say that it's captured the glide slope which is the end of vertical navigation so at this point completely set up for landing we've got 10% flat captured the localizer the glide slope is armed and all we have to do is maintain throttle to ensure that like I say between about 80 and 70 knots on the initial kind of path in and as we're getting closer maybe between 70 and 80 knots to when we cross the run hold, runway threshold to for a nice smooth landing. So we'll attempt that now. We'll see how it goes. Like I've always said, my landings are not the greatest, but you never know. This time might be different. 
Just some more bits of information here. So at the top in magenta, we are currently on the leg between ILV 9.6, 9.6 nautical miles away from the airport, the ILV 7.5, 7.5 nautical miles away, which is the final approach fix, FAF. It's 0.8 nautical miles away. The bearing that it's at, our ground speed, and this here tells us when we'll pass that next waypoint. You can see here, glide slope is coming down. And a perfect speed, 80 knots. Bit of wind, 15 knots at 124 degrees. So if I had the ATC on at this point, I would be confirming that the landing, acknowledging the landing clearance, that kind of stuff. Um, I've got it turned off because it kept squawking at me because uh, it's still a bit buggy when you manually load in a flight plan. Here we go now, glide slope is armed, so it's going to take us into the airport on the 3 degrees glide slope. All we're worried about now is throttle and our minimums of 260 degrees, ensuring that we can see the runway. If we can't see the runway lights or the runway before 260 feet, we basically go around, so full throttle, fly over, and out to go around. Speeding up here, just going to reduce the throttle a little bit. Um, at any point when you're confident that you can see the runway and you can fly in, you can disarm the autopilot. Um, I normally leave it till maybe 10 degrees above the minimums because if it's automatically going to land you, why not let it automatically land you? So we are all set up for landing. 10 degrees flaps. Localizer is captured. Glide slope is ca captured. 83 knots. Drop the throttle out just a little bit just to reduce that speed. I want to reduce it in an emergency, I could put another notch of flaps down, but I think Liverpool Airport on this runway is quite a long runway, so I don't think we're going to need more than uh, 10 degrees flaps. See right in the thick of the cloud here. This is actually uh, not live weather, but this is the weather that we've had in England today. So uh, I've been out in this, so I can confirm it is actually this foggy outside. Well, it has been today. You just maintaining your throttle, add a little bit in if you think you're losing a bit too much speed. I'm going to aim for about 75 knots at this point. You can see here, ILV 75, final approach fix to the runway 09. So this makes it so simple that I'm just going to show you and then quickly put them back on. But you can take your hands off your controls because the autopilot is doing everything for you at this point. Um, if you've set it up how I've kind of shown you how to set it up now, you don't need to worry about you're all lined up and you're all at the right pitch. It's not until you get to your minimums now that you really need to put your hands back on the controls. Um, obviously, it's good practice having them on there just in case anything goes wrong, but it is not necessary. Playing over what I assume is the River of Mersey. I'm sure someone will correct me on that if it is not. to this one 1000 feet drop the throttle out we're just gaining a little bit of speed there there you go you can see where the airport is I've kept on the POI markers just to show you but basically if we zoom in we can see the papi light so we can confirm we can see the runway now you can see indications and we're above our minimum, so we are all, all okay to land. Um, so if you couldn't see anything down to 260 feet, 
then that's when you kind of do your go around. But we are confirmed in landing configuration and we can see the runway in sight before the minimums. So we're all good for this landing. If you wanted to now, you could disengage the autopilot, auto fly in, but like I said, uh, manual fly in. Like I say, the plane's going to do it for you. You might as well let the plane do it for you. That's my thoughts on it anyway. Maintain the throttle, like I say, roughly 700, uh, 700, 70 knots for when we come over the runway threshold. Autopilot has announced 500 feet as kind of a warning, you know, that you get ready to turn off or disengage the autopilot and fly it in yourself. Like I said, I'm going to wait all the way down to probably about 300 feet. Let the plane do as much of the work as you can do. Oh, hands back on the controls now. There's 300 feet, drop a little bit of the throttle out. There's minimums, disengage autopilot and fly the last 260 feet. Gently pull back. Reducing the throttle. Over the runway threshold, throttle to idle. Just glide the plane in. If you were struggling as always, stuttering away. Bit of a rough landing, but we're down. Brakes. Speed down to 30 knots. Flaps up. There we go. Continually braking. Basically now just looking for that taxi. There we go. You can see the taxi ribbon there. There we go, safely down. Get the plane down to below 20 knots on the ground speed over here, just for when you're taxiing. You can see that's how easy it is to kind of set up an approach and fly it with the autopilot on the G1000. Um, it can be done with the Cessna 172 and anything else that's equipped with the G1000. Just makes landing at airports you're not used to so much simpler and easier. And um, yeah, it's, it's showing that it's not that hard to do. If I can do it, um, anyone can do it, basically. So, yeah, I, uh, I hope that's helped some of you out, and I will, uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.